Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. So, Nerf Blasters come in all sorts of different varieties. You've got the Humble Pump Action Springer, or the Top Prime Springer. You've got the Semi-Automatic Flywheel Blaster, like the Strife. And you've got the Fully Automatic Blaster, like, for example, the Rapid Strike. The Rapid Strike is kind of usable with its Fully Automatic. Uh, but sometimes, Fully Automatic can just put you in a mood. It can put you in the mood to just want to, you know, pull out a blaster, pick an 18 dart magazine, load it in, and then, uh... <laughs> Obliterate your enemies before they even see you coming! So the Worker Phoenix 2.0, except this isn't quite the Worker Phoenix 2.0. This is more like the Worker Phoenix 2.0, except this isn't quite the Worker Phoenix 2.0. If we just do this really quick... This is the Worker Phoenix 2.0, as you probably recognize it. This is a blaster that was released in 2022 from Worker, and seemed kind of unimpressive at the time. The blaster was a new flywheel fully automatic blaster from Worker that took angled talon mags and was a direct successor to the Worker Phoenix, hence the name Phoenix 2.0. The Worker Phoenix was pretty cool because it was basically a strife-sized blaster that had a triple stage flywheel cage set up and was fully automatic out of the box for about $100. This one costs twice that much, but then again, this one is just... It's doing a few things new, but don't worry, we'll get into all that in time. First, we gotta start out with the design. This is a design that's kind of controversial because most people say that this is one of the least visually interesting blasters ever. It looks really, really weird. It's basically a giant teal box with a grip on it and a foregrip that is angled the wrong direction, and then this big stock sticking out the back that doesn't really match the blaster at all. I'm gonna have a hot take, I love this design. I think that it is super utilitarian, super post-apocalyptic, super futuristic. It looks like something you would see in Cyberpunk and I can get around that design. I think that it is a cool looking blaster that really takes itself seriously. It looks professional and everything looks like it's got a reason to be there. What about the ergonomics? This blaster has a main grip, includes a foregrip, and has a stock which is actually removable but not interchangeable. Unfortunately, this was before Hasbro dropped the patent to the stock attachment point, so this is a proprietary stock. Though I do believe there are stock replacements that you can get for this blaster if you don't like the adjustable stock it comes with. I absolutely love this stock, so I'm not going to be doing that. But anyways, the main grip is very big. Very, 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 very big. Holy dingus. This is like Big Chungus style thick. This is a huge grip. Front to back, side to side, it's not actually that big. It's about the size of a rival grip side to side. From front to back though, it is unforgivably humongous and it is so comfortable. I don't have the biggest hands out there and I honestly think this is one of the most enjoyable grips to hold on to. I don't know why, I just really like the feel of this massive overcompensating grip that this thing has and they even give you a rubberized finger troil right there, which makes it just a little bit more comfortable. Obviously, the whole thing is rubberized, you can tell by this large black sleeve that's on it, and so yeah, it just, ah, uh, it feels so good. As for the stock, it's adjustable, and at its full length, it's the perfect pull, and feels very solid and very comfortable to brace against your shoulder. It's large and flat on the back with these ridges to give a little bit of texture, so it's nothing to write home, but it is very comfortable. As for the foregrip, or should I say foregrips, because technically, this blaster's got two, let's talk about the main one first. This looks really weird. It's angled forwards instead of being like an angled back foregrip, but honestly, this makes it easier to brace the blaster against you. It is honestly a super comfortable, super well-designed foregrip that does function over form. I can get around it not looking the absolute best because this is one of the most useful foregrips I've ever seen on a blaster. It's sturdy, it doesn't fall off, and yet at the same time, it's pretty easy to remove. Mostly friction fit with this little peg that clicks open and closed that expands once you put it into the blaster to hold it in. And with that, yeah, the foregrip is fantastic. What about the other foregrip? This thing right here in front of the, well, the trigger guard. 
I count this as a foregrip because it really feels like one. It's big enough to put your four fingers around with your index finger kind of being stuck in this finger troil thing up there. And honestly, it works very good as a foregrip if you take the main foregrip off and make this thing look more like an Uzi or more like a submachine gun of sorts. It is very nice to hold on to this like a foregrip and it gives the blaster more of a P90 feel to it, which I can get around because I love the way the P90 feels. The ladies and gentlemen, I've been hiding something from you this whole time. This foregrip right here is actually useful because there's the Allen key you need to open the entire blaster. Just like they did with the Harrier where they put the Allen key back in the stock, they put the Allen key here inside of the foregrip. Now that begs the question why they didn't have an Allen key space anywhere on the Nightingale, but I'm not even going to worry about that. I'll review the Nightingale another day. Let's talk about the triggers. This blaster only has a main trigger and a mag release button that is only on the left side. Not on the right side, which is honestly a huge issue because if you're left-handed, taking the mag out is kind of an issue. You have to pull your whole hand up and push the button. Though if you're right-handed, you can just move your thumb up and push the button. When you push the button, the mag automatically ejects and falls down. The mag well is actually very light, and it's actually so light that you don't even need to push the button at all. You can just... Yeah, it's, uh, that actually becomes kind of a problem because I have seen cases where the mag just falls out just from doing this like that. And granted, that didn't happen when I was testing this blaster, but it is something that can occur, perhaps if you use this thing in too aggressive of play. But just letting you know, in case that happens, I warned you. I warned you ahead of time. The main trigger is actually pretty clicky. It is just pressing an electronic switch and the, uh, the springs in there are very nice. I'm not pulling the trigger for a very specific reason because as soon as I do, the decibels from my mic drop about 30%. Watch. <coughs> See? I told you, you could barely hear me now, can you? Yeah, so how does this blaster work? Well, it's a fully automatic blaster that really lets you know when you rev it. It is loud. This is a super, super loud blaster that is actually so aggressive that it can scare anyone in the room with you. As soon as you rev this thing up, everyone knows you're there. Say goodbye to stealth, because this is single-handedly the loudest flywheeler I have ever seen in my entire life. Yes, it is louder than Phase 1 Foam Straven, and any of the other blasters that I've seen him use. And it is powered by a 3S LiPo, which you can buy with the blaster, though it doesn't include one out of the box. I will show you the LiPo that I got with this blaster, I'll link both the blaster and the LiPo in the description below, but just really quickly, Lipos are terrifying, just let you know. Read up on them before you use them because you can burn the house down and people have burnt their house down. But basically, you take a magazine, you put it in the grip, and you just pull the trigger and it revs up so fast that you don't need to worry about anything else. And then just mag dump your opponent like it's nobody's business. That is so fun every single time. I haven't even shown you the best part yet. You see this little thing right at the front underneath the barrel. Let's say you don't want to dump your entire mag in half of a second. Well, let's put the mag in and let's turn this dial up to the middle position. So you can see there is a middle position right up there and let's rev and fire it again. Did you notice anything? It took substantially longer to do that. And what if we do it again? I, I lower it even more and then put this, the, another bag in. You can effortlessly adjust and tune the rate of fire with this blaster with a freaking knob on the freaking front of the blaster. This is a mechanic that I really wish existed on every single fully automatic blaster ever created in the hobby space because having a tunable rate of fire that you can easily change like a usable primary into a mag dumper like the Woozy, it's beautiful. It's a dream come true. It's everything that I wished for. And this blaster in particular does it so well because the blaster is made beautifully. The plastic here is so thick. The grip is so comfortable. The entire like proportions of this blaster are made for it. Like you can easily use this as your main primary or use it as something to do this with. And you can switch it in like one second. It's perfect. Fifty percent. 
Solo Worker Phoenix 2.0, a blaster that I wasn't expecting to be this terrifying when I got it, and ended up exceeding my expectations a lot. This blaster has had a mixed reception over the years, mainly because the original version shot really slow, and there really just wasn't much usage to it outside of a primary class full auto blaster, and the appearance of it was kind of a turnoff to a lot of nerfers because it doesn't look conventional and it looks kind of silly. But I love this thing. I love this thing a lot! This blaster is doing so many things right that it's really hard to find anything to complain about. Heck, even if you put the ridiculous foregrip on it, as I mentioned earlier, I still think that it looks pretty cool and it works just so well. It's just so nicely done. Though there are a couple things that I want to point out. One, the battery tray. It is barely big enough to fit the battery inside, and I mean that in the most generous way possible. Trying to fit the battery in here is actually a challenge. It is a chore and a half, and it makes my Tesseract look like a walk in the park. After this video is done, I'm going to go downstairs and demonstrate how I fit the battery in here, so if you guys buy a Phoenix 2.0 and the battery that I'm going to link, you will be able to know how to fit it, but still, be careful. The other issue is the motor's running away at max RPM. If you try and do like burst firing with trigger control, it runs away very easily. It is basically impossible. Once you pull the trigger all the way down at max RPM, the mag is going to be empty by the time you release the trigger, guaranteed. Because even if you don't hold it down for the duration of the magazine emptying, the motors running away will guarantee that the last couple darts will shoot out before the mag is completely empty. And yeah, your mag will be empty when you pull it out. Though at the same time, it is fully automatic. It is a mag dumper at max RPM. There is no excuse. You're going to want to empty the entire mag if you do that. At lower rate of fires, like about halfway, it is a whole lot easier to do trigger control and I never had any issues with running away. So do I recommend that you pick up a Phoenix 2.0? Let me make this abundantly clear. If this is what you're in the market for, you just want a nice, comfortable primary that you can double as a full auto primary and a specialty mag dumper, I think this is one of the best options you can reasonably go for without spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars on a custom build. This blaster costs less than $200, has a tunable rate of fire, which is seriously one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my entire life, looks pretty good, is super comfortable, and has worker's seal of quality if you'll call it, by being injection molded, made with very thick plastic, and being super nicely built. On top of that, it is a triple stage flywheeler, so you are guaranteed to terrify anyone who's in the room with you as soon as this thing revs up. <laughs> My gosh, it's so violent that it actually pushes against your hand when you rev it up because of how fast the flywheels rev up. Oh my gosh, I love this blaster so, so much. But I don't think this blaster is going to appeal to everyone. Remember, not only is it using half-length darts, it's using half-length darts with worker angled talon mags, which most of you probably aren't going to have because there's so few blasters that these mags are compatible with. So chances are, if you get this blaster, you're already planning to make an entire rig around it, which I certainly have. I ordered 10 magazines after I got this blaster because I realized that it was so ridiculously cool that there was no way I wasn't going to order a whole bunch of mags for this as soon as possible. So with that said, if you want to get one of these blasters, I will link it in the description below. I will also be linking the battery and the angled talon mags that I got in the description below. So if you want to, you can make a rig based all around the Phoenix 2.0. Thanks for watching. Bye. Hi, so really quick, here's an idiot's guide to fixing this battery. So once you take the battery cover off, you can see how big this battery is. But you can see right here that all oh, man, the, the Phoenix 2.0's wiring is actually so long that you can make it into a loop-de-loop. -loop. So if you carefully make it into a loop-de-loop -loop right there, you'll have just enough room to fit the battery inside, and you might even have enough room to fit a lipo alarm between the battery and the back. Though I'm not quite sure about that, it's just a theory.